Oh, okay. Well, we're going to start. It's uh, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. And I start with that because that's not who I was when we started this whole Catholic school process. 25 years of Catholic education in Brooks. From 1992 to 1999, called the Founders. The formation and foundation of a Catholic school in Brooks began in the early 1990s and rested in the hands of a small group of advocates from St. Mary's Parish. They organized and they conducted a census of the entire Brooks community. Then they hosted three separate votes in 1992, 1993, and 1995. Yes, three votes. It took those three votes, countless conversations, endless prayers, times of challenge, moments of deep reflection, and without doubt, movement of the Holy Spirit to bring Catholic education to the community of Brooks. Well, you know, the fondest memories I have are the people that were involved. Um, Mary Stengler, uh, rest her soul, she was an inspiration for me all through that period of time. Father Keith, uh, other parents that were very, very committed to having a Catholic education option for their children uh, was, a, was a huge part of the best memories I have of that time. And then I, you know, I think over the years, uh, just looking back and uh, realizing that the effort was huge, but that the payback was so much bigger for the community. Change is difficult, and for the many Catholics and non-Catholics in the town of Brooks in the early 90s, the idea of opening a Catholic school where none had existed before was not only daunting, but divisive. The public school system in Brooks was excellent and had always been the only school system. Many adults in the community had attended Grassland schools. They were loyal and concerned for what might happen if families made a different choice. Would the children lose friendships? Would public school jobs be lost? What building would the new school be housed in? And perhaps at the heart of the controversy, why do they need a Catholic school? Isn't the education in Brooks good enough for all our kids? I think the biggest challenges were communicating with the citizens of Brooks at the time and people that were very invested in the Grasslands Division, that this wasn't costing uh, the community anything, that this was going to ultimately be an asset for the city of Brooks, and which it has proven to be. I think a lot of people view change as something that always affects them in a personal way, uh, that there's a cost to it, that there's a loss, um, and that's, that's the biggest thing about change management. So I think that was the biggest challenge. I remember meeting in this uh, part, kind of part of the school um, with the current principal at the time who ultimately I served with as as the who was the mayor became the mayor and I was served with him and the superintendent uh, of the grasslands division who I've since become friends with that the change was worried about what it was going to cost so I think that was our biggest challenge to overcome but I think ultimately when you look at the community from an education perspective that the city of Brooks has benefited greatly from having two very strong public school systems public schools are our neighbors our colleagues and our friends Catholic education is not against public education. It is for Christ-centered, faith-based, fully permeated learning that calls every person involved to know God, to love God, and to serve Him. Finally, in November 1995, the Catholic community in Brooks decided that they wanted their children to have the opportunity to attend a school that began the day in prayer, spoke openly of Jesus, and permeated faith in every aspect of the curriculum. They wanted their children to know the love of God. Change is difficult. Through the contentious discussions, soul searching, and quite honestly, the work of the Holy Spirit, plans moved forward. In the winter of 1996, a decision was made to join Christ the Redeemer Catholic School Division. A trustee was elected, and a name for the new school was chosen, Holy Family Academy. I believe that Catholic education was very important to me uh, because we were moving into the founding years. It was brand new to the city of Brooks. Uh, we were going in not knowing really what we were doing and in what capacity we wanted to start the school, but we knew that the uh, strength was behind us due to the fact that parents had to work so hard just to get Catholic school to be a reality in the community. The leaders of Holy Family Academy knew that the new Catholic school had to be authentic and genuine. 
It had to be highly focused on its mandate as a Catholic school. It had to be noticeably different, or else what was the point? Those early founders were resolute and faithful advocates. They were prayerful visionaries. Their sacrifices ensured that children in Brooks had access to Catholic education. It took me from here in my faith to here. And, and it did that with everybody because you, you were expected to be radical in your Catholic faith, not lukewarm, that, that you had to really believe in Jesus and God and uh, Mother Mary, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and we joined every morning to affirm that. Teachers were hired, walls were painted, classrooms created and school council established, and so began the community of faith and learning that would become the bedrock of Catholic education in Brooks. So I remember going to the school after we'd been hired. It wasn't opened yet. And wow, what did we see? <laughs> there was such a beehive of activity, but what it was was there was such a sense of community. Yeah. We were 18 teachers that were hired to open up a school, but we were enveloped by the Catholic community of Brooks. Yeah. The parents, parishioners, grandparents were there to support us. We were never alone in this journey of opening up the yeah. school. We thank God for calling advocates, educators, parents, and students to be part of opening Holy Family Academy in August of 1996. To be able to live your faith, what a gift. What a gift to come and to pray with your colleagues, with your students, to be able to talk about your faith and, and have your own like development as a Catholic and to be able to to really touch the lives of, of these young people in, a, in a, something outside of academics, that's a real gift to me and that's a blessing to me. 25 years of Catholic education in Brooks, from 1999 to 2002, entrusted builders. By 1999, Holy Family Academy had more than 300 students in grades K to 9 and more than 38 teachers. The conversation began about the need for a Catholic high school. In January of that year, a visioning weekend was held and a decision was made to form St. Joseph's Collegiate that September. Truly the greatest challenges that we faced with Catholic education in the city of Brooks was facilities. The need for space was crucial and that spring a rally attended by 650 people demonstrated to the government that Catholic education in Brooks was on the move and growing. New portables were added and the government announced that they would approve an expansion and modernization of the existing buildings. The new facilities would open in the fall of 2002. When you are growing a school, every decision is foundational. Faith events and prayer experiences became the norm. Staff gathered daily for prayer. School masses were held at the church. Monthly adoration was embraced. The liturgical year was celebrated. The school decor reflected faith. Classroom prayer corners were central to each classroom's prayer rituals. Teacher faith days, living rosary, stations of the cross, and parent prayer groups created a community of faith. 25 years of Catholic education in Brooks, 2002 to 2014, gathered, and leaders. Over the next dozen years, the communities of Holy Family Academy and St. Joseph's Collegiate grew and strengthened. Excellent, faith-filled teachers continued to deepen student learning and shape student faith. With the opening of the modernized facility, two distinct Catholic schools became a reality, with separate administration, schedules, school councils, and events. When I walked in, I couldn't really explain to this day why, but it just felt different. It was a different feel in the building, almost like I could feel the, the faith in the building. I could feel the amount of prayers that had gone into, into the building after I heard the story later. And I know when Bonnie gave me my first tour, um, she commented, or I commented to her, I think, about halfway through about just how this building just felt blessed and felt different. So I was a very fond memory and I knew right away that I belonged here. The newly created space added a large accessible gym that could accommodate phys ed classes for both schools and host highly competitive athletic tournaments and events. The social space with floor to ceiling windows created a spacious bright setting for students to gather. 
as well as a place for special events, concerts, and meetings. Administrative offices for both schools moved into new space, and the beautiful new library hosted a well-stocked collection and a reading area for students to work. Most importantly, St. Jude's Chapel was built. Furniture from St. Jude's Church in Tilly brought in legacy possibilities for intimate worship to the Catholic schools. Bishop Henry blessed and approved the chapel as a sacred space to house Jesus in the Eucharist. Morning staff prayer, daily student and classroom prayer, adoration and special services could take place in this additional space. St. Luke's Outreach, a Christ the Redeemer outreach school based in Okotoks, recognized the need for such programming in the Brooks community, and in 2008 they opened a campus in Brooks. The coordinator of the first year was an educational assistant from St. Joseph's Collegiate. She facilitated online and in-person instruction for students in the upstairs room of the St. Mary's Parish Hall. Together, St. Luke's Outreach became a living testament to its motto to leave not one heart behind. The first thing I learned about St. Luke's Outreach is that it is a place of non-judgment and it's a place of hope. Every student that walked through those doors had a story to tell and a story that I probably had never heard in my life, but one that needed to be listened and one that needed to be understood. Some students were there for a short time and others were there for a very long time. But being in that building, we knew that we were answering God's call to love our neighbor and to support those that really were in need. Strong academics continued to be a hallmark of Brooks Catholic Schools. Student enrollments were skyrocketing. The search for exemplary Catholic teachers interested in rural Alberta continued to be a goal and a challenge. As a school staff, we grew in faith together. We had many opportunities to do that. The most transformational experience was our frequent staff retreats. Christ the Redeemer's outstanding recruitment continued to bring top-notch Catholic educators to the district from across Canada. As a rural community, Brooks staff transition rates remained high, and many of our young and dynamic teachers who began in Brooks transferred to other schools in the district and throughout the province in years to come. A significant number moved into leadership roles in their new communities. Teachers took their experiences in Brooks with them as they taught and led in their new schools. In the course of these years, new students arrived from around the world. At the onset, a number of students from Sudan, Nigeria, and other African nations enrolled. Many students and families were refugees, often bringing a history of trauma and refugee camps with them. These students enriched our culture and challenged us as educators. As we grew in our understanding and expertise, Brooks Meatpacking Plant continued to hire skilled workers from around the globe and our school enrollment rose dramatically. Students from Latin America, Philippines, and Eastern Europe arrived, many of them speaking no or very little English. The student population was changing rapidly, and our schools needed to change rapidly to respond to our new reality. Mother Cabrini was just a fascinating experiment for Christ Redeemer. We did not know how to serve English language learners. And so quite frankly, the community rolled up their sleeves and learned by doing it. I remember how passionate those teachers were and how much leadership they had to assume being at this separated campus from the rest of the school. So really some amazing things, amazing leaders and amazing programming that came out of Brooks. Holy Family Academy and St. Joseph's educators gathered consulted experts, hired strategically, and developed a thoughtful response to English language learning. Brooks Catholic Schools made a commitment to educating our new students with excellence and compassion. Investment was made in resources and professional development. Due to the continuing space issue, a temporary campus a block from the schools was commandeered for ELL instructional space. Mother Cabrini Center became a hub of collaborative teaching and learning. The English language learning population in Brooks schools has been a gift to our school and has enriched all aspects of our community. I am so thankful 
I am so thankful that we have Catholic education and it wasn't until I was an adult that I actually realized that it's not everywhere, especially like in Canada even. Uh, we are so fortunate, we are the fortunate few and I just can't imagine another home to send my children to to be educated. 25 years of Catholic education in Brooks from 2014 and beyond, inspired witnesses. In 2014, Brooks Fourth Catholic School opened. Christ the King Academy became a five to eight middle school. St. Joseph's Collegiate was modified to a nine to 12 school and Holy Family served K to four. The old 1960s portion of the schools was demolished and in 2015, Christ the King opened a brand new two story facility. Brooks Catholic Schools serve students from around the world. With a total population of just under 1,100, Brooks Catholic Schools continue to witness faith in their schools, parish, and larger community. Not only do we have that opportunity to really um, live our faith, but we're re even we're challenged, right? We're challenged to um, to um, practice the Catholic teachings, right? In like our school, we fought to be Catholic, like you said, and um, so we need to um, to prove that we are living the, the Catholic way. Teachers from across Canada continue to be hired in Brooks. They bring their love of God and their vocational call to teach with them. They enrich the school and the community by their presence and their passion. Catholic education has been instrumental in the new evangelization of our church. Brooks RCIA and RCIC classes have been thriving. Strong links between St. Mary's Parish and Brooks Catholic Schools have drawn many children and adults to seek baptism, instruction, and confirmation in the Catholic Church. This one girl uh, came to Mass once with me and met me at the door, and there was two or three students with me that morning. And she came back again, wanted to come back again, um, and did come back again a couple of months later. And then I find out that she's talked to her parents about wanting to get baptized and, and join the Catholic Church. and. Her family supported her and took her to the classes and got her baptized and and uh, that was all through attending our school. That never would have happened if she attended public school. So just the feeling that God, you know, leads these students here and, and somehow moves these parents' hearts to be open to the, the child asking for baptism and to join the church. And it's just awesome to see when you see students without that faith background who um, whose life is literally changed for eternity because they attend our school. It's amazing. Many cite their involvement with Catholic education as the reason for their desire to join the church. Teacher and staff led Catholic formation classes and they serve as godparents and sponsors. They are witnesses and role models. Catholic education in Brooks was started by a small group of courageous advocates. More than 25 years later, much has changed, yet the essentials have stayed the same. A deep, committed, and unwavering faith in God is the reason for our schools. Each child who has passed through our doors or crossed our graduation stage has been steeped in a culture of God's love. Each teacher and staff member who has served as an educator these past 25 years has grown on their journey of faith and learning. I think I'm making a difference for others, but I know that God has really been here for me and my family because of being immersed in Catholic education. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And He has called all stakeholders in Catholic education to know Him, to serve Him, and to love Him. When Bonnie took us for a tour of the school, I felt the Holy Spirit. And I really, I've never felt like that coming into any building. But this place is different. It, it does have, the Spirit is here, and the Spirit's working because the people that he brought over the years to us, it's for a specific reason. He has called each one of us in the Brooks Catholic School community to grow stronger, to grow deeper, and to reach higher for his sake and the sake of our children. And I think my biggest takeaway is that we need to be always mindful of why we exist. The importance of us being unabashedly Catholic and um, and working that prayer and that faith into our day every day, not just in our religion classes, but, but all throughout the day. It takes a village to raise a school, and we have been raised by the village 
that surrounds us. I feel the same way as a principal. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you who has been a part of our 25 years of history. I look forward to where we're going to go next and I'm very grateful to God for blessing us with the people in this community and Catholic education. We close in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for Catholic education in Brooks. In Holy Family, you invited us. In St. Joseph's Collegiate, you built a community of faith and excellence. In St. Luke's Outreach, you ensured that no heart was left behind. In Christ the King Academy, you sent us forth as noble disciples. My Jesus, continue to shower your grace on the families and founders, builders and believers, servants and sowers in Catholic education. Let us soar on wings like eagles. Through you, Lord Jesus, all things are possible. Christ the King, have mercy on us. St. Luke, St. Joseph, Holy Family, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.